Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Shelters by Jesus Radio. I'm your host, Seth, with our new co-host, Al Tiemann. Al, how are you this morning? Oh, I'm doing great. This is the day the Lord has made. Very excited to have Al on board as part of the team. We have a great topic for you this morning, so uh, stay tuned. Welcome back, Al. How have you been this week? It's been a good week. Uh, a little chilly, getting chilly. It was in the uh, upper 40s last night. So yes. That's yes. free air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a winter person myself, so I can't wait for the snow. I'm never never a summer person. It keeps the bugs down, doesn't it? <laughs> right. yes. We have a very interesting subject, and that is we're going to talk about faith without works, as found in James 2, 14 through 26. Well, it's important. I think there's uh, two pictures that are going to emerge here. Is is One is going to be people that do good works and what are their motives and then there's people that don't do them at all mm -hmm. and so I think you're gonna I'm guessing there's gonna be two pictures that are gonna emerge here and it should be quite interesting and hopefully there'll be some ideas that people can pray about and perhaps apply to their life uh, particularly we want to focus on encouraging people to get into service for God uh, we're gonna be in James 2 verses 14 through 26 uh, I'm gonna be reading from the NIV uh, we'll start with the verse 14 what good is it my brothers and sisters if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds can such faith save them suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food if one of you says to them go in peace keep warm and well fed but does nothing about their physical needs what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. And show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. Do you believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe and shudder. You foolish person, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did? When he offered his son Isaac on the altar, you see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Wow, well, wait. That's pretty heavy, Al. James is a convicting book for sure. <laughs> Very convicting. Very, uh, you, yeah. We can go into James 3 about the tongue. You know, I mean, just it's, you're right, it's very, very convicting. So, Al, we know works doesn't save you. No. Right? So, we're not discussing salvation here, right? We're, we are saved by God's grace. Ephesians so, 2. Yeah, right. It's in there. Ephesians I thought, just remember two, that. Right. That's something to remember. Amen. Yeah. 8 through 10. You know, and what I want to bring up about Ephesians 2, 8 through 10 is, is verse 10 specifically, where for we are God's handy, we're created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So, we're not talking about unsaved people here we're talking about people who are saved what are you doing with that faith? Mm. i guess is the question that james is asking we're being asked here in the book of james is what are you doing with said faith and so today al you know i want to encourage people who may be on the fence about doing something that they feel god calling them to do and i think it's an important thing to discuss because every christian has a purpose if you're saved you got a purpose now, how, how do you help people to figure out what their calling is? I mean, we all have one, right? Would you agree as Christians? I agree that there are callings from the Lord. I, I don't know that it's just one particular one. Right. Really all day long, you know, not just on Sunday morning when you come right. into church, uh, but ways to live in tune with when, when he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. There's a life there. And a, and a lifestyle, I think, indicative of somebody who has given their life to Jesus. Yielding to that, I think, will, will show fruit. We want to be in that role. <laughs> right. I mean, we all, we all want to be serving God, right? We all want to be doing what he's called us to do. I, I think that's an evidence of a regenerated heart, is that our, our heart's desire then is to serve the, the master the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I think it follows suit. So, yes, I, I forget what your question is. <laughs> you state that again? We could go on. But. Oh, we can go on forever. But, you know, if you have someone who might say, what is my calling? How do I know what ah. my calling is? You know, and I know from personal experience that 
it, it's a difficult question to ask because what what does it mean to be called by God? But I look to his word and what it tells you. And once you give your life to the Lord, our life is not ours anymore. Mm. And so we have a desire then to, to serve our master, the one that went to the Amen. cross for, uh, on Amen. our behalf. Yeah. I remember a story that Frank Peretti told. And he had was younger and had been picked on and what have you. But he made a comment that, that stuck with me. He said, who you are today is not going to be who you end up being. Mm. He said that in the context that he was younger, he was kind of a person that people picked on and bullied in school, and he just thought that was the way it was going to be for the rest of his life. And so he was kind of captured in that moment. What that means is to say is that who we are today, and it doesn't matter what your age is, it's not going to be who we necessarily end up being. We know ultimately we're going to be glorified with the Lord. But there's this journey that we go on. And being used of the Lord and being in His will, there's nothing better. There's a real great Amen. joy being yeah. in that. Yeah. So He has a call for us to serve. And where He said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and then love your brother too. That's a springboard really. So what does that look like in real life? It could take on a number of different forms. There's no shortage of needs. Amen. And here at the shelter, we see that. And so there's great opportunities. I think sometimes people find themselves here at the shelter. And I usually say it's it's not an accident. God's I believe that, too. I believe, I believe people who end up at the shelter are divinely appointed to be here. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Amen. So they might find salvation as a, as a starting point and something mm. that they've been searching for. Mm. Uh then again, there are people that I've seen begin to serve the Lord here in Amen. a number of different capacities. And right. it's just, it's maybe one step along the way, but it, it's, I think it begins to answer your question is like, what is our calling? And absolutely. And people start to search and experience the joy of serving the Lord, maybe in some small capacity, seemingly small. But that's big in God's economy, too. So Yeah, well, I mean, we talk about, you know, Christ mentions the body, the different the body, parts of the body, yes. the hands, the feet, the legs. It's all important, right? It, you know, uh, some people have this misconception that being a pastor is the highest calling, right? I think whatever God has called you to do, that's the highest calling on your life. There's um, an interesting supernatural phenomena that takes place and that when the Holy Spirit indwells you, the word says that you become a new creation. In, in addition, additionally, you're endowed with a spiritual gift the Holy Spirit then gives you. And that may be a starting point because that gift will enable you to serve in different capacities. And so I, I like to preach on the spiritual gifts. And, and if you can remember 12 and four, those are those are some starting points, 12 and four. And so then if you know some of the books of the Bible found in Romans 12 and 1 Corinthians 12, there's the 12, Romans and 1 Corinthians 12, and then Ephesians and 1 Peter 4, there's the 4. Romans, 1 Corinthians chapters 12, Ephesians and 1 Peter chapter 4. There, it's not, I don't believe it's an exhaustive list, but there are some listings of spiritual gifts there that people then are given, that may be a starting point where people can endeavor to say, well, find out what, what is the spiritual gift that the Lord has given me, hmm. and then begin to walk in that. Right. Would you agree, or would you disagree, that there are basic callings on every Christian, right? Serve the poor, love your spouse, raise your children in Scripture, study His Word, pray, yes. be kind to each other. And there's a basic calling that stretches across all of Christianity. Yes, okay. we're all yep. supposed to reflect these characters, which are sure. from Christ, right? And then there's something that's more specific. Now, I found in my life, my experience, Al, is that I find that by obeying these basic precepts, right, right, that God leads me to my call through my obedience and faith in Him. I like that. I like that. There's the overlapping, overarching principles, precepts in which we're to live by, and then as we're going about that, we're going to find that. There's some things that we're really good at mm. and begin to show some fruit, results of, of following the Lord, and 
we also find some great joy. So I, I would agree with that. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Can, how, would that, how does that pan out in your life? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> this is what I find out through my obedience. I'm a bit of an introvert, Al. I like to be in my cave and be left alone. And God has called me to the exact opposite of my desire, mm. my fleshly desire, which is to be left alone into the ministry where I have to counsel people and you know help people with their struggles and share the word of God. I have to engage. And so I am living in faith contrary to what I think my life should be. I find that serving God means death to yourself, mm. I guess is what I'm trying to say. You know, like Christ says, pick up your cross daily and follow me. And like literally you are having to die to yourself daily. Whereas normally I'd, I'd prefer to be left alone. How can I be left alone when I have these things like love your neighbor? Well, mm. Seth, if you're alone, how are you loving your neighbor? How are you serving God? You know, and so now I have to be engaged. And now so God's spirit is what empowers me to do so. And there's anxiety and there's fear in doing that. But at the same time, Al, I see the fruit that God has placed in my life because of what I'm doing for him. Mm. So I think that's been a big confirmation for my service or my calling where I'm at. Now, I was going to ask you the same question now. Uh, what led you to understand that teaching was your calling? I might have mentioned in the first interview that I had heard one time that a person should be able to say what their spiritual gift is. And equally as to when they gave their life to the Lord at general time. And so I found that really convicting to me. Mm. I, w I wasn't just, because I, I was good just going along and, and I knew that something had happened to me, but I didn't quite know how to explain it or what that meant in, in terms of my life. I know that my likes started to change. A little embarrassing to say, but it was a staple then when we went shopping that I would always get some beer and that was just, you know, it was understood. That's what we got. And it doesn't happen with anyone, but the Lord graciously took that desire for alcohol away from me instantly. Mm. And I ended up dumping that down the, down the drain. So I knew something had happened to me. I was not the same person. Mm. And so when I had heard that, find out what your spiritual gift is, I began to really want to find out and, and, and what it was that God has given me as a spiritual gift. He is giving you, dear listener, a, a spiritual gift, at least one. And from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, I'm just going to read uh, seven. So, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So there it's to say that these spiritual gifts aren't for us. Use your gift for the benefit mm. of all. Right. So the gift isn't like just for Al's blessing. It's for Al to serve God to bless others. And for Seth to right. come Amen. out of his cave yeah. <laughs> and start yeah. working with, with, with others. Oh, so Amen. I, I, I said, what is it? And I see this list of them, and it's not exhaustive. And, sure. And not to get all religious about it. I brush my teeth religiously. But to get spiritual about it, there is a Holy Spirit, mm. and he gives a gift. So I, I looked at it, and I see prophecy. I see serving, teaching, exhortation, giving, leading, Showing mercy, healing, miracles, discerning the spirit, tongues, interpretation of tongues, helping, administering, mm. and it goes on, speaking and serving. And so, so then I wanted to say too, then jumping to verse 11 in 1 Corinthians 12, but one of the same spirit works in all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. You're going to get at least one, but at any given time, you can be given any one of these gifts or multiple of the gifts. And your calling may evolve as you go. It may become something else. Yes. Like God puts you here, and then he, yes. he grows you, and then it becomes something. And be willing right. to move. Amen. Be willing to move. That's, that's where I struggle, Al, to be honest with you, mm. is the, the willingness to move. Well, uh, we, get, we get comfortable, for we sure. Do. We, we can do. get comfortable mm. in, a, in a place and feel safe, and, and we know what's around, and that isn't always the case where the Lord wants us to be. Sometimes he wants to stretch us and, and show us new things and, mm. and encourage us to work in our life. You know, I recall pre-salvation, 
there was a time out doing some errands, and, and I worked for a newspaper, and we had uh, I was a manager of carriers at home delivered newspaper. Anyway, I was in Orono by Governor's Restaurant, and there was an old-fashioned car that was stalled. It was right in the middle of the road, and I thought, like, get out of my way. What's this going? What's going mm. on here? And so then I realized as I drove by that it was an elderly lady who was in a car that had apparently stalled. So I pulled over to the right, went over and carefully, and then I said, what's going on? She goes, my car just stopped. I don't know what to do. And I said, well, let's get it off the road. She goes, well, how do we do that? I said, put it in neutral. It happened to be a real level place. And I, I pushed real hard, and it started to move, and just enough, and she steered, and car stopped, and we steered over to the side, and she was safe. And, that, and it was before cell phones were invented. So I went up to a house nearby and I said, lady needs some help. Can we call someone? And they're like, sure. I got back in my car and I thought, wow, that was a good deed I did. Mm. And, and for sure, I felt good about it and I helped somebody. Sure. And then I thought to myself, you know what? God probably liked that. And he did. And then I said, I'm going to try to do one of those a day. And I'm going to write it down somewhere. I'm going to try to do one good deed. And I thought it was going to improve my position before God. He was going to look with favor on me. And I didn't understand all things. Mm. But we're just supposed to do those kind of things anyway. Without the bells and whistles and and expectation that anyone's going to see it. So there's pre-salvation thinking I'm going to get works are going to prove beneficial for me in the end times and I'm going to get saved by that. No, that's not what the word teaches. But then being saved, you want to do good works. And I think if you're doing it for him, you don't need to have it be seen because he sees everything. Amen. So I'm thinking of then the opposite kind of a story would be the woman given two widow's mites. Mm. What a cool story that is. Amen. And here's people blowing their trumpet and, and saying, look what I'm giving. And then here's Here's a, a, a widow who comes in and gives these little, little small coins, quarter of a cent, and gives a couple of those. And, and uh, you saw the Lord get really excited about that. Well, and how encouraging is that, Al? Because, you know, people think that, well, you know, I, I can't be Billy Graham. No. Well, but God didn't call you to be Billy Graham. Your rewards can be just as great if God has called you to be hospitable. Open the door for someone. You don't think God sees that? Carry a woman's groceries to her door. You don't think God sees that? Of course he does. Yes. Right? And he and to him, that, that's joyful. That's worthy of celebration. Mm. You know, Billy Graham had his calling. Don't put him on you. You know, just obey your calling. What right. Is, what is, and, and you could be just as significant and impactful in the kingdom of light. Um, think of all the people that had were involved in putting on those crusades. Amen. That just planning and, and organizing oh, and, and everything that was involved with that. And those were all equally important. And those were good works and those were involvements. And, and then the Lord used that. People got saved. I remember Louis Palau came to Augusta. Mm. He did a crusade and, and it was neat to see the various churches in the area come together and say, we're going to promote this. We're going to encourage people to go to it. As a result, a lot of people got saved. I met one Amen. one time and just like, I said, when did you get saved? And tell him the story. And he said, well, I went to this crusade, you know, somebody hauled me off these guys. And, and he, and I'm like, yes, it was, it, there really was people that got saved. Then there was a follow-up too. That was one of the big things. I said, mm-hmm. let's follow up with these people. Let's start to teach them then what it means to do good works with the right motive. And I think God blesses everyone involved in that. Like they all share a reward in in those salvations because they all, as a body, Mm. came together to make that possible. So we want to be encouraging to those who are looking to serve God. Uh, whether you know you're you're waiting for a signal from God or someone to say hey to go do this or or you're not sure what it is you want to do or maybe you're just starting but maybe you're you're unsure of taking that next step or trusting in God. I want to say thank you for uh, listening to our podcast. If you'd like to support us here at Shelters by Jesus, you could do so by hitting the listener supported button where we get 70% of anything that you donate. Or you can go to our website at www.sheltersbyjesus.com where we get 100% of whatever it is you donate. If you'd like to send us a letter, you can do so at 12 McClellan Street, Scout Egan, Maine, 04976. Or you can give us a phone call at 207 407- 474-8833. Thanks for another great episode, Al. Looking forward to the and, next one. Amen. God bless you and thank you for listening.